The Flash is a student form for students produced by students. Students make all content decisions, research, write, shoot, and broadcast news stories they deem important to the ECU community. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, welcome back from spring break. My name is Lucas Novak. I'm Gavin. And we got three interesting stories for you today. First, we got a story by Zian on LGBTQ plus inclusion in our schools. Next, Miguel takes a look about what's some of the stuff that Avid's been doing. And finally, Ricardo has a story on the new air purifiers in every classroom. Stay tuned for The Flash. Hey Lucas, do you know what today is? No, I don't know what today is. Well, to break the illusion debate, it is March 31st, and today is the International Transgender Day of Visibility. So, to highlight that, Zian has a story talking about a few students who have taken it upon themselves to help make the 196 community a safer place for people within the LGBTQ plus community. Take it away. There is a lack of inclusiveness in minority groups, but some students in our district have worked tremendously hard to make changes in the way we embrace differences. One of those groups being the LGBTQ plus community. It is no secret that changes need to be made in order to make them feel more welcomed and accepted, and one student at Egan High School is trying to do just that. There is a lot of changes that I think our district needs to make. Tori Westenberg is a senior at Egan High School with hopes of being more inclusive for our LGBTQ plus students. Alongside her partner, she helped enforce a club to make impactful change and improve the way our LGBTQ plus community is treated. I think every school needs to have at least one gender neutral restroom. I think that our school and district as a whole needs more inclusive LGBTQ curriculum in history, in literature, in science, definitely in sex education. It needs to include all students. Um, in the LGBTQ community or otherwise. Students here at ECU have also taken steps to further the inclusion of LGBTQ plus community. But have those steps been enough? Because I do see like individuals making an effort, but if I look at the general ECU population, it's more tolerance than acceptance. Senior Alex Dillon leads the Gender and Sexuality Associations Club, or GSA, a community where LGBTQ plus people can meet in a safe place and where people can learn about the LGBTQ history. Because the biggest reason why people often exclude LGBT people, I think, is because they are scared or afraid or they learn to hate LGBT people. So I think the best way to counteract that is to teach them that they don't have to hate them or they shouldn't hate them. In the future, um, I hope that Eastview, the Eastview community can be a safe space instead of having to, instead of students having to try to find and search for a safe space within the community. I just hope the entire community would be a safe space for them to exist. GSA meets every other week from 3 to 4 p.m. on Zoom. You can learn more about the club by DMing their Instagram at EVHSGSA. These students set an example as to where this community can go to be a safe place for all students. Signing off for The Flash with videographer Godwin, this is Zian. When you have a passionate group of students that are passionate about change and LGBTQ equity in schools, you can make a real difference. You know, it's really good to see the students taking action and, you know, trying to make their school community a better place. That is really cool. But you do know about one program that I have no clue about here at Eastview? The AVID program. There's so many students in it and I have no clue what it is. Yeah, neither do I really. Well, thankfully, we do have one student in the flash who knows a lot about it. Take it away, Miguel. While learning here at Eastview, you might have noticed posters and pictures on the walls. But if you take a closer look, one decoration that pops up in a lot of classrooms are AVID posters and flags. But what is AVID? So AVID is a program, um, the AVID stands for Advancement Via Individual Determination. It's a nationally and internationally recognized program that helps provide support for students who are first generation college students. Now you know what AVID is, but how does it help students who have joined? AVID helped me as a student because it helped me prepare for my homework and I'd get on top of class instead of procrastinating. Uh, how it's helped, it's definitely those skills once again. Uh, now I know how to write a resume, how to contact colleges. I know what I want out of a college, out of a job. I know how to do a lot of things that I wouldn't really learn in other classes. 
or when we'll be able to find anywhere else. The pandemic has changed the way Abbott operated this year. So here are some things teachers miss and some of the students' favorite memories. My biggest thing I miss is having my Abbott family. Um, I have a cohort A, a cohort B, and I had a cohort C. And it's really about building that community and having everybody, uh, those 30 kids really close um, and they're like brothers and sisters and, and helping each other out with everything. The thing I most loved about Avid was the field trips because mostly the bus rides getting there, we would all talk and it was very chill. And then once we got to a college, then we could all experience it together. I miss having everybody together in the classroom. Um, with hybrid A and hybrid B days, it's just not the same. And I love the, when all of the students can be together. Now, even though AVID students can't be together this year, there's hopes for things to return to normal next year. So, for more information on joining AVID, visit the ECU website or talk to your counselor. This is Miguel, signing off for The Flash, back to the anchors. Hey Godwin, have you seen those air purifiers around the school? No, yeah, I have them. Yeah, I have no clue what they're used for. They're air purifiers. Oh. Well, Ricardo decided to take a look around and see what they're all about. Since we've been back to school, You've probably noticed an air purifier in each of your classrooms here at ECU, but have you thought about why they are there, and why did the government fund it? Well, I did, so I sat down with two individuals who have the information regarding these air purifiers, and here they are. I'm Senator Greg Clausen, and I serve the communities of Apple Valley, Rosemont, Northeast Lakeville, and Coates. I'm Carol Hashchild, and I'm the coordinator of project management and purchasing for the district. I ask them how these purifiers help us, how they work, and why are they important to us. There are some things that people can do to try to protect themselves from uh, the COVID-19 virus. One of the things is to, of course, wear a mask. Uh, social distancing is another. Try to purify the air that you're uh, surrounding yourself with. Um, they also sense movement in the room and they sense particles in there down to 0 0.03 micron. And so they are really efficient when uh, purifying the air and trying to reduce the number of uh, COVID particles that would be in the air. It is a recommendation from the Minnesota Department of Health that um, in buildings to reduce how COVID is spread. Well, now we can feel a little more safe at school knowing that the air we breathe is COVID free. Well, that's all for me. Until next time. Well, Lee Shu, that's all we have for you today. Thanks for watching.